but I mentioned uh, just at nine o'clock this morning the uh, passing away of Father Ger, Father Gerard Galvin. And you may well recall uh, I had a lovely conversation with Father Ger uh, the back of August um, because he had posted a video, a farewell, a very emotional farewell video to his parishioners online. And I remember watching the video, being very moved by it and followed it up with a, with a chat with them. But during the video, he says um, he said that he was recording um, something but he'd rather not to have to record it, but he had no choice left but to do so, to record a video of his farewell to the people that he loved and to his parish and all of the parishes he served in before. I mean, he was ordained in 79 and served in uh, the parishes of Grona Braher, Skibbereen, Passage West, Monkstown, Clonakilty and Muintur Vara. Um, but he said that he would rather not do a video, but had no choice. He says, I wish it wasn't like this. I wish I could shake your hands and say goodbye, but I can't. I don't have my energy anymore. Um, I was very, very moved by that and had a chat with them a couple of days after the video went up online. Perhaps you saw it, perhaps you didn't. Perhaps you heard the full interview. Uh, if you didn't, then we're you know, resharing the interview again on, on my Twitter page and also on, on Facebook. Father Jur, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Is, is Jur a bit too familiar? Should it be Gerard or Father Galvin? Let me get that right. Uh, well, Jur is what most people call me by, and I'm very comfortable with that. And Father Jur. Jur. Yeah, OK, yeah. because you're on first name terms with everybody. Listen, many people were very touched and moved by your farewell video. Were you expecting that? Absolutely not, no. Um, the video was recorded because I was... I'm unable because of the cancer in both my bones, which is in every bone of my body, and uh, in my lungs as well. I was looking for a way, searching for a way to say goodbye because I knew it was over for me as a pre- as, as ministry in the parish. And I was chatting with a couple of friends, and they said, "Why don't you record something and just put it up on, you know." send the link to mm-hmm. people yeah. and let them look at it and then send on the link because I have a group yeah. that I, I I text every Sunday morning called uh, I, Thoughts from Isolation but not Isolated Thoughts. Yeah. And I I do that every day, every week. So it was really meant for those people and and then obviously somebody in the group passed it on. I think the trail uh, was from the from the from the group mm. to the Southern Star, mm. and the Southern Star was pe- it picked up from the Examiner. I think picked it up from That's the Southern right. Star, yeah. and then it went kind of to the Irish Times and the uh, Independent, and as far as the Sun. And as far as the newspapers are concerned, they only have limited circulation, but online it's endless circulation, and many, many people have seen it. We're very moved by it. In fact, found it quite sad. Was was it a difficult thing to do? It was very, very difficult uh, for me to do. Uh, mind you, it wasn't done in one take. There was no, I know. Uh, you know, we'll here, we'll try that again. No, no. Uh, I, I. It was from my heart. Um, I wanted to say goodbye to people who had been extraordinarily good to me and kind to me uh, over ye- over the years, mm. and um, saying that was was very, very difficult and very hard to keep back the tears at times and. Just, but it turned out to be the only thing I could do um, that I thought would be effective. I was, I'm absolutely stunned myself mm, mm, at mm. how far it's gone. I got a, just to, for myself, which amazed me, the power of the internet I know is very powerful. Mm. But I got a note from a priest in London who got the link from some friends of his in the Philippines. Astonishing, yeah. I couldn't figure that out. Uh, and then, of course, my sister, I have a sister living in Brussels, and she said, it is bad enough to have this bloody virus without you going viral as well. <laughs> a virus and a viral brother. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh but, my God, um, I know, I know, I know. Difficult, you know, it was, difficult, it was difficult, difficult. Difficult. Yeah. 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 And yeah. when it was very tight, when it was, it was very hard. I didn't look at it at all until it actually hmm. was put up. I never looked at it. And a friend of mine said, you know, Jared, this thing has been looked at by a hundred and something people. I said, I've got to better look back at it and see see it. So mm. uh, I wouldn't change a word, not a word. Um, I'm very sad and I'm very sad by it, be, be, having to put it up, mm. because it's obviously for a number of reasons. I've been a priest for 42 years. I've, um, I've been being kind of on, how would I put it? I've been on the edge a lot of the time. 
Um, what does that I mean, Joe? What does that mean? It means I wasn't slow to comment. And sometimes my comments were negative against the church, uh, against, but particularly about around the child sexual abuse stuff. Mm. Uh, I was very vociferous. But isn't that just being honest, Here, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's what I, I would have hoped I would have achieved uh, in my 42 years in the priesthood. And um, I, I've, I've been dealt with media a few times. Um, I appeared on the 6 o'clock Sunday evening news a good few years ago yeah, now yeah. because I refused to read a letter that the bishop sent out. And I'd still refuse to read, to read the same letter if I got it today. Did you, know? you get it in? Did that get you into trouble from time to time with your bosses? Uh, I, that's an interesting question. I have never, no, and yes. Um, <laughs> like a politician? In this... <laughs> Yeah, in the sense that they, they, like that particular episode about uh, that I refused to read the letter from from Bishop Buckley, never once did he mention it to me, ever. What was in that letter that you were unhappy with? Was it the sheer tone of it? It was that, that but it also spoke about that the system, there was a systems failure. There was no systems failure. The computers kept working. There was a failure on the part of, in my view, uh, bishops and people in authority to acknowledge, yeah, accept, yeah, yeah. and begin to re, re and begin to repair. And we know that There's to be true today. That. Yeah, we know that to be true. Absolutely. Yeah. So I refused to do it, and there happened to be two people who were friends with uh, some guy in RTE, and I was on the six o'clock news the following evening. Yeah. On the t- excuse me, the television news, and uh, my poor mother when I rang her out was how are you, how are you, ma'am. I'm trying to say, would you do something for me? I said, well, would you shut up sometime? <laughs> no, I mean, let that, no, I mean, let that episode be part of your legacy as a priest, I would say. Oh, oh I, and it is absolutely part of what I would, I would, I think I would probably the only, I don't know, maybe I'm incorrect in this, but in my, in two of my churches, the one in Doris and the one in Kilcrohan, there are, there instead of holy God, chalky God statues, there's in one there's a broken stone with a piece missing yeah. that'll never be found. Yeah, yeah. And it's on jute sacking and it represents the victims. And the jute sacking represents the, the when they went for justice, it was rough justice they got. Yeah, I know, I know. And I know. and those kind of things. So there would be kind of part of of excuse me, of I hope what would be left behind. Ab- um, yeah, absolutely, because you know what? It's it's easier just to toe the line sometimes. It's it's difficult to say how you feel. You you also I mean you, you asked for a you you apologize for the hurt that you caused yes. in words, deeds or lack of same. Um yes. that's not unlike all of us really, sure it's not. We all need to atone. No, but but I, I, I just I feel very strongly that you you apologize. You you know it may take some time to get my head, sorry, took some time to get my head around some of it, but I decided, yes, yes I have to apologize because I know I've hurt people. I know it because I've been told so. Um, and that some of the things I did were offensive to people. And if they were, then I, I'm all for saying, look, I'm sorry. I it was not my intent. Uh, it never is my intent, but if it happened, it happened. And you have, I would find it. Uh, disingenuous or not disingenuous is the wrong word I'm sure not to apologise yeah, you know it, yeah. and it isn't and it was hard for me to do to sit in front of a camera and yeah and say look I screwed up as well as everyone else but that's up, just you it know? I mean you're, you're like offensive in life saying the wrong thing being rude inconsiderate or are you saying from the pulpit uh, both yeah yeah but you're you're, uh, all, no, you're only from human the pulpit, yeah. yeah from the pulpit would, would have would have been rare um but there were a couple of instances, I'm sure, uh, that were offensive. But I, they, it, it, like I thought, I already caused more trouble by mentioning holy God, uh, chalky God statues. Just something simple like that offends people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, and and sometimes not, I'm not too aware of that. But was um, it? I mean, you know, in, in the priesthood, all those years. Over 40 years. And, and if you get tired, do let me know. But was it a lonely life? I mean, you know, you, you didn't marry, you didn't settle down or, or have children. Was that something you ever thought about? Absolutely. Um, and it is a lonely life, you know, regardless of what is said. Uh, it has its perks in that you're not able to know one, but that I found myself becoming selfish. 
because I can listen to the music I want to listen to. I can have the volume at, to the, through the roof if I want to. There's no one going to say turn it down. They're only simple examples. <laughs> I don't have to worry either about buying shoes for the children to send them to school. Yeah, yeah. And that's why, to me, when people paid offerings and Jews to me, I was very conscious always, because I, I have two sisters and a brother, and they have children. And I watch them, and I learn from them. They had to pay for the children's education, like every parent does. And I learned how privileged I was, but that privilege also came with and I, the price tag of loneliness and uh, aloneness more than anything else. Mm. is the thing I missed, I think. The intimacy mm. Mm. intimacy is a thing I think clergy can lack oftentimes. Mm. And I'm not talking about sexual intimacy, I'm talking about the intimacy of the soul and the heart. Where uh, a, Even a life, pa- a life partner, yeah? What about it? Is that what you miss, or is, is your, yeah, is your know, life partner the church, God, religion, Catholicism? It's part of it, but it's not the full picture. Um, I wrote a piece recently. For, I, I often write when I'm angry, but only for myself. I sit down and I get the stuff out of my system. It's one of my little tricks to keep myself sane. Yeah. And I recently wrote about that, an article about sexuality that... I was in Minute. I was in Minute, Spain for two years, in Minute for four, in my former, in my historian time. And not once was I told that I was a sexual being. Not once was the word sexualization yeah. or yeah. any of those profound, profound human, human factors was never discussed, never mentioned. Oh, sex was discussed. Yeah. And you couldn't have, you couldn't use a contraceptive pill. But no one ever told us during our course in minute that you know you are even though you can't use that you are still a sexual being yes, you know yeah, yeah there was a yeah a piece missing the piece a piece of the jigsaw was never put in place you know and uh, and i excuse me i think we kind of pay the price for that then down the line um uh, in many different ways in loneliness and then that lo- what, how how is that loneliness covered how is that loneliness dealt with? Mm. Uh, what do you do? Mm. So that's what be kind of my experience. The church is all negative. I sound. I have the positive thing for me in the church has been the people, as I love the Irish word, the pubble day, the people of God, mm. and that's where where we where it should be at. You and know? was that um, the was that the I, communions, the confirmations, the baptisms, the weddings, the funerals, the, to getting to get helping people through heartbreak? Exactly, exactly helping people. When when they needed whether it was to have a bit of have a bit of fun with it, the first communion, the confirmation, or the preparations for that, or being with a family whose son or daughter had died by suicide, for instance. Yeah, I know. I know. Or what do you where, say? You know what? Do you or say? where a woman has died by died because she was murdered. Yeah. I've been called to that, and um, you know what we see and hear as priests rarely gets acknowledged. You know. I was called once to a person who had been found having been three weeks in water. No, you can imagine. I know, I know. Uh, and there's no psychological help or background. Oh, well, there wasn't then. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I mean, I suppose. And like, that's where community yeah. and, yeah. Uh, f- uh, and family kind of becomes the, the parish, becomes that community and family for and, me. And, the, and I've enjoyed it. And the farewell that you, that you made online, would that, would that perhaps in another time have been done from the pulpit? I mean, we had periods when there was no mass and then I think 10 and 25, I think. Is it, is it 50 now? Yeah. I mean, has, have, have I you mean, found that yeah. very difficult? Well, I, I haven't really because I was diagnosed in 2018 Sorry, 2019, on the 5th of November, I got the diagnosis that I had lung cancer, incurable lung cancer. And then I was, I had a, a session of chemotherapy. And after the chemotherapy, fortunately for me, the cancer seemed to go to remission for yeah, a while. Yeah. And then I, into in the early 2020, I was getting bad chest, chest pains in my lungs and I was, take it in again and uh, they found that I had cancer in my bones and then I met Dr. Dr. Derek Power, the most amazing oncologist in Ireland in my view, well I've only met him but he's a stunning man, he's so caring and like he then did, he did a bone biopsy which 
if have you if have you never had one, I hope you never will. Oh dear. They say that uh, the when someone said to me that the patient will have some slight discomfort after it. And when I met Derek Power afterwards, the Derek changed that to the patient will have the fires of hell pain coming out of his back. <laughs> you haven't lost your sense of humour anyway. <laughs> oh God, no. When I've lost that, I'll die. I'll be dead. So is it, but, is, uh, is it, a, is it, yeah, he, sorry. Yeah. So, so he told me then, he sent me for a PET scan, which is this radioactive thing because I'd had everything else. Uh, I had every, everything else scan you could find because they wanted to pinpoint the primaries. So they did this PET scan, and on Friday, two weeks ago, when family met Derek Power, and he told us that the PET scan, that this, my skeleton had lit up, and that the cancer was in every bone. And if you ever saw a load of concrete blocks or bricks being discarded out of the back of a truck when they tilted, mm-hmm. That's what it felt like to me that I was that I was standing there and they just collapsed on top of me, and it's been really hard to. I see my third battle with it. You see, my third. I, I started in 2015 yeah. with a very unique, unusual cancer, and it was again, and now it's again. So it, but this time I'm, this time I'm going to lose. I know that, um, and but it took me. A lot longer this time to come around to yeah. to sorting it because I would be try to keep a positive attitude. I would try to keep a, a, a or I would try to understand it, and I would try to uh, try not to let it be my life. And it's at long last, it's taken the best part of ten days, two weeks nearly, to to achieve that this time round. But that's a long time. And I've been cranky and odd and peculiar, and that's not how I am normally. Um, but I, I tell you this, I think you'd enjoy this. Um, the local parish priest called to see me, very nice, kind, decent man. And at the same time, a very good friend of mine called to see me who happens to be an undertaker. And we were chatting away for half an hour, and then when they decided to go, I said, you do realise now what you're going to do to the community? And they said, what? They're going to think that Galvin is shagged all together because <laughs> he's the undertaker and the parish priest in the house to get making arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um, so is it would, so, would, would it be would it be fair to say that you were saying goodbye to a lot more than the parish, or you were saying goodbye to a lot more and welcoming retirement? Are you saying no, you are saying, are you wearing, nearing the end? I was saying goodbye to the parish. I was saying goodbye to. Uh, uh, to to an awful lot more than that, you know. Um, I know the, I know I haven't asked for the prognosis, nor am I going to. But I'm not a fool, and I know from Derry Power, his attitude, and I know from the way he he's he's helped me, uh, and he has been very clear. He has used the word incurable several times, and I know from. From looking at him, I'm talking to my GP that um, that this is one form of a battle that I'm not going to win. Um, in other words, it's going to kill me. The end will be the end, and I know that. And that's what I'm trying to come to terms with. And and str- the strangest the strangest part of all this for me is that my faith in in a loving Jesus is actually stronger than ever before mm. and um, someone did say to me at some stage you know it's terrible why you and Don me why not yeah why anyone why not me yeah. why why anyone and like I don't, I'm, not, I'm trying to avoid going down I have avoided completely that role of why not me why me why not me I, why not me to me that's sorry but, you d- but, that. but I think you did have the fear the anger the resentment the self-pity and you replaced oh, yeah. it you've replaced them you said with hope and with love I have replaced them with hope and with love and I have found I have found with and I say one of the blessings of the pandemic for me has been I've had the time to process a lot a lot of the stuff and get it you know think it out and uh, there's a, a piece by John O'Donoghue, the, he used to be, a, you know, I'm sure you've heard of him. He was the author of Anam An- An- Kara. He has a piece uh, written in one of his books that I picked up and read. And the advice of somebody, and it tells you, it says, 
ask the illness what it wants from you. What is it? What what should you do with it? Why is it with you? Where is it going? And I thought, yeah, that's a lot of bull. And but after about the fifth reading of it, I said it's actually not. It's true. So I set about doing things like repairing broken relationships that I had broken and asking for, for forgiveness and apologising for Did you get it? I got it from three out of four. Yeah. Um, but yeah. simple things like that, I have found they they give me what I'm looking for, yeah. what I need. And I'm not afraid anymore. I was uh, just going to ask you, is there no fear whatsoever? Not, oh, there's fear. I, I'm sorry, no, there's no fear. Actually, there's no fear. It's a sadness to be leaving my family and friends behind me, you know, when that will come. But that's everybody's in the canoe. Uh, but I'm not afraid. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not afraid at all of death. It is. It's um, for you. There's another for something. you and many. There's another chapter awaiting, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. Well, for me, there is. Yeah. Uh, I was actually asked yesterday by or the day before yesterday by a really dear friend of mine, and Skews. She's a church of Ireland director, fantastic lady. She said she asked me the question about, you know, about God and heaven and the future, and I said, yeah. I'm fine with it. I'm, I be, you know, I, I believe number one and number two. Uh, I hope that God's mercy will be mine, and I believe that one hundred percent. And have you any because, idea where you, where you, what it will be like? Oh, oh, you should answer that <laughs> no, question. No, I'm just. Be, I mean, in your mind, in your head, you know, in George in Galvin's mind, be, mind, what what do you think it will be? It'll be a place without pain. Is the first thing. Oh. Um, a place where I can sleep. I know some, no, to me, it's a, it's not about place. It's about love. Um, that's to me what heaven is about, and that's why I believe very. Strangely enough, I believe in purgatory. You know that there's a preparation because I don't know how to love without. I don't know how to love completely. Unconditional love is something I can. I haven't yet grasped fully. And to be part of heaven, to be part of God. My belief is that I have to have that. That has to be part of me. So in, in spite I of 40 years in the church, doing as much good <laughs> yeah. as you did, you feel oh, that you're, you're still not 100% worthy? Absolutely not. Right. I have a long way to go. I have a long way to go. And I, I'm, I, again, that's one of the things I'm really, I'm missing very much, is the, that support of a parish. You know, the child is read by villages. That I think there's something like that saying, well, for for me as a priest, it was the parish that kept me going, and yeah, yeah. and the, the kinds of people down Winterfire was amazing. Uh, is ama- it was is amazing to me, and I know that um, there's a, a prayer said for me every single day. In fact, I told Eric Parr at the last at the family meeting where he told me the the, the, the disastrous news. I said at the university, you know, you're causing environmental havoc. And he looked at me as if, like, oh, he, it's in his brain now as well. <laughs> and uh, he said, what do you mean, Jared? I said, there are so many candles, so much grease being lit on my behalf down in Westcock. It was all your fault. <laughs> and even more after you went online with the video, I can tell you. <laughs> exactly. And exactly. But it's, it, the video has been... Sorry, I, you, uh, I cut across you. I'm sorry. No, you were no, going to say? I was just curious. Will you stay um, where you are or will you go Will you go back to Tim League, I'm wondering? I'm, I'm, I'm in Tim League. I, I, I always... Haven't been in Doris now for a long time. I know, I know. Right. I we see when 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 the my first round with cancer, I had a really bad time. I got infections. I had a I came. To, I literally did come within ten or fifteen seconds of death. Uh, it was a horrendous time, and this time round, than the last time round, Derek Parr said, "You have to be ruthlessly careful." And I said, "What does that mean?" He said, "You take no risk with anybody." If somebody's coughing or grunting or moaning, keep them away. Don't go near them. I so I that's one of the reasons I'm here at home in Timothy. The house is fine. It's comfortable. It was our family home. It still is our family home. But um, there are no steps in it. It's a bungalow. So yeah. there's no dangers or hazards for me. And and I will stop. I have already told one person not to decide that they can't come into the house because I couldn't take the chance. I know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm actually starting chemo tomorrow again. And... And like that will be, a complete, that's, I'm very vulnerable when, extremely vulnerable when I can get in chemo. And I know that. And is that because you want to extend your time? I think you mentioned that it, you, you say it is incurable, but is that to give you more time on, with your family, with friends, that's, with nature, with life? 
I suppose it is really. You've asked a very uh, pertinent question. Um, and yeah, of course, I, I want to stay with my family and friends. But if the Lord calls me tomorrow morning, then that's okay too. But obviously, I want to contain it insofar as it can be contained for a while. Yeah. Um, and it isn't that I have things I want to do. When I have 78 pages of my book written, it's going to be vicious. But um, I... So, <laughs> Publish Sorry. it. Publish it after you're gone. Then. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Walking in circles, as it's called. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's. I, I yeah, obviously, I, I just like everybody, every human being. You know, I, I most human beings that I know, all of them actually, you just want to live another day. And if I don't live another day, well, then I don't live another day. That's not my call. And but today has been a lovely day. And you've been very, very it's been honest. a wonderful day. It has, in, in the sense that it, the, the sun is shining and you're still amongst us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. And my sister now was here this morning and she brought over the dog and Henry's a small horse. is the size, he's huge. And I got a chance to say hello to him and he knocked a few things, but that's okay. I care less. And you, but it is a lovely day. And as you say, the sun is shining. Um, I can get up. Well, I do have a walking frame now, and I have a whole lot of things to help me in the oh, shower, in the kitchen. Yeah, of course, things you need. But it's, that's okay. But I, and I've learned, I suppose what I've learned, one of the great lessons I've learned is about dependence and independence. That I am now dependent. I was totally independent all my life. Now I'm dependent on people to shower me, to help me get dressed, to put on pain patches on my shoulders and on my side to do all of those anything I, you know to do all those basic things that I took for granted I was independent enough to do now I depend on people and I've learned that dependency is is great is grand it's so, like a, it's like a circle of life isn't it you're almost describing childhood again really yeah well it is I suppose in a sense yeah yeah yeah, And I also think that there's a lot of people who are listening to this now who have their own pain or their own illness or their own mental or physical struggles. And they, I hope, will take a lot of comfort um, and peace from what you're saying. I, I really believe that. Well, I hope they do, too. And don't be hard on yourself. And is my advice. Another thing that drives me to the loopy bin is when you get 15 messages one after the other on the phone or something. Be strong. Be positive. If I hear the word positivity again, I swear I'll scream. <laughs> I like. I want. I am positive. I'm very positive about all of this. What would you prefer people and to say, Father Jar? Just you know, hang in there, Jar. Or you know, we're there for you if you want to. If you can do anything, help you. You know, and I, I, I know it is a kind of a, it's a good you you you're asking too many pertinent questions. I don't like you anymore. Okay, <laughs> well, but no, no. But one of the questions, uh, the, the other question is, how are you? Kind of looking at him, thinking, uh, hello. Uh, <laughs> but one of, a friend of mine decided he would deal with that for me. At one stage, I was telling him how much I hated. So he sent me a text the following day saying, "Do you realise, Jerry, that the mortality rate for humanity is a hundred percent?" There are no hitches on a hearse. <laughs> and he said, finally, life is a dead ginger. Enjoy. <laughs> He's a charming friend, isn't he? <laughs> i tell you something. Uh, some I'm, ver- I'm very sorry I missed your sermons because I'm quite sure I'd have listened to every single word of them. <laughs> well, they're not too bad. They weren't too bad, I suppose. All right. But, well. all, I, but I, do that, I still do that on a Sunday. I still send out the thing on a Sunday to my about 50 people. And it's very, oh, it's, it, it's, it's reflection. It's on the scriptures always, but it keeps me challenged and uh, keeps me going. And um, it's a great help to you, you know, and, and I can't say any more than that. I know, I know. Well, listen, I hope I, I didn't tear, uh, t- tire you out. I don't know whether we'll ever get a chance. I, oh, hope we get, I hope we get a chance to talk again in the future. Uh, because I think there's uh, a like, lot. Likewise. There's a lot said, but more to say. But can I, can I just yeah. wish you all the best for now anyway? Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate that. And wish you the very it. best of luck on the rest of the journey. Um, just before Thank I let you. you go, when you, you spoke about the selfishness of being a priest in the sense that you had nobody to look after except yourself, and, and that was a positive thing at the time, of course, as you're saying. You mentioned that you could turn your music up as loud as you wanted. When you turn the music Absolute. up, what, 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 are you, what are you listening to? At the moment, I'm listening to kind of solemn, well, not solemn, 
I I love Celine Dion. I love <laughs> Dionne Warwick. I love women, powerful female voices. That's what I really love. So if I was to play one or the other for you, which would you like? Well, which song would I like? Yeah. Um, a song by Celine Dion called, uh, oh God, of course I can't think of it now, Call the Man. Call the man. Let's play it for you, Call Jer. the man. Let's play it for thank you. Thank you very much indeed. All the best. God bless for now. Thank you. God, and you too, Lane. And thank you for, for your time and for the clarity of your questions. It was my, it was my pleasure, I can tell you. I'm honoured. Thank you. Close the-